Greetings from our garden here at St Bride's Church, Fleet Street, here in the very heart of the City of London. We're delighted that you're tuning into this podcast and a very happy Easter to you all. Do please leave a comment or a like. It's always good to hear from you. And if you'd like to donate to help support these online services, you'll find details in the accompanying text. And now may the light and peace of Christ be with us all as our worship begins. The disciples returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please be seated. A very warm welcome to this online service. Wherever you are in the world and however you are listening to us, we hope that you will feel very much a part of the St. Bride's family. Let us pray. We say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended to the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Daniel. As I looked, thrones were placed, and one that was ancient of days took his seat. His raiment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. I looked then because of the sound of the great words which the horn was speaking, and as I looked, the beast was slain, and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven there came one like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and kingdom that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking of the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you heard from me. For John baptised with water, but before many days you shall be baptised with the Holy Spirit. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, Behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. 
And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. They returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We've heard this morning in our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the story of Christ's ascension. It's very easy, I think, to underestimate the impact that this departure must have had on the disciples. And so worth spending some time reflecting on it. The desolation of Good Friday was replaced by joy and wonder on the third day. But here we are, 40 days later, and suddenly Christ has departed from the disciples again. They surely expected him to stick around, didn't they? Now that he's gone, where does that leave them as they head for home? The scripture tells us that they returned to Jerusalem in great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. But what does the future hold? I imagine that it must, at least at some level, be another bitter blow. We pair the reading from Acts in the lectionary with Jesus' prayer of protection from John's Gospel. In retrospect, it fits well, Jesus anticipating his departure and praying to the Father for the disciples after his ascension. But it was only with the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost that this, the disciples were able to look ahead and embrace the mission that God intended for them. This period after the ascension was likely one of great uncertainty. We can see, though, that the disciples have learned something from their previous experiences. They stay together and they pray. It's worth noting the priority that's given in the prayer of protection to unity. Jesus says, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. These words indicate to us that unity bears witness to God's very nature. Many of us find it very comfortable that we're divided from some other Christian groups with whom we disagree. We might also find the Anglican Communion's efforts to keep together people with profoundly different views torturous. Certainly in the world's eyes, many have come to think that disagreements define the church as much as anything else. But if we find the path of separation attractive, then this passage provides pause for thought. If unity bears witness to God, then surely we must be reticent about embracing division. Whilst Christians are capable of taking diametrically opposite views on a topic, it is often notable that those on both sides of a debate will select from Scripture to justify their positions. As we anticipate the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost, we might recognise the importance of the Spirit in our reading of Scripture. A legalistic approach to Scripture is one to be wary of, I think, wherever it comes from. Far better to focus on the Spirit of the law than on its letter, otherwise we risk selecting from Scripture only those passages that we find reflect our biases. This is contentious, I know, and I wouldn't suggest for a moment that you should necessarily agree with me. 
we know that people hold genuine religious convictions in different directions. And while some historical divisions in the church are now healed, it's no longer contentious, for example, that slavery is not part of God's plan for the world, but it once was, that there is still division over issues like female leadership or sexuality. For many of us, change is painfully slow. But in one of last year's Wreath Lectures, Rowan Williams very helpfully reflected on the importance of religious freedom. Those with religious sensibilities, he argued, bring qualities of seriousness, imagination and courage to society. They help us not to overlook the importance of human imagination and to appreciate that we have responsibility in this life to more than naked power. They have a sense of irony, they put power in context and hope that the ways that things happen today are not set in stone for eternity. Religious freedoms are the foundations of political freedom, he argued. And since moral questions are not reducible to majority opinion, we should be careful to protect those of conviction if we are to genuinely grapple with the issues of our day. Right and wrong are not always black and white, and questions of tolerance are particularly challenging. The issues of our day and how we should respond as Christians may leave us confused. Like those disciples after the ascension, it might feel that Christ is not with us. As we look to identify the lessons that the ascension might hold, we recognise that it has often left congregations puzzled. John Robinson began his theological bombshell, Honest to God, published in the 1960s, by asserting the impossibility of taking the ascension account literally. There's nothing new about that, though. Many scholars over the ages have recognised the difficulty of interpreting the story in a purely literal manner. The language of heaven and earth was actually employed in antiquity in a sophisticated theological way to denote the parallel and interlocking universes inhabited by the creator God on the one hand and humans on the other. I found it fascinating when visiting the Holy Land to discover that whilst modern pilgrims remember the ascension at a small shrine that has a stone with footprints on it within, the original site was a cave where Jesus was believed to have taught his disciples. I don't know how those early pilgrims responded, but it appears that they may have been rather more comfortable with metaphor than we often are today. The idea of the ascension is actually tied up with biblical cosmology. The book of Genesis describes the separation of the waters. When our Semitic ancestors look, looked up into the sky, they thought the blue they saw there was the waters above that had been separated from those below. And it was beyond those upper waters that the heavenly realms were believed to be found. Perhaps it's helpful to our modern minds to focus not on Christ taken up from the surface of earth, but rather on Christ taken from it. As Oliver O'Donovan notes, the ascension is a material event which involves the material body of Jesus. It leaves the time-bound order to enter the immediate presence of the Creator. The transition from the earth to heaven is more than a reversal of the incarnation, at which time God came down to earth, as we put it. It is an elevation of a physical body bound in time and space, to an order that is greater and beyond.
all we can say is that the transition occurred and that there is a beaten path that lies before us, linking our physical existence to an existence in the presence of God. We cannot see or understand the path. The cloud which hid Jesus on the mountain top is a veil that which we cannot comprehend from below. But we know that the path has been taken and that we too will take it one day. We may feel that we live our lives waiting in confusion, perhaps like the disciples after the ascension. If so, it's helpful to stick together and to pray. And as the Spirit was poured on the disciples at Pentecost, so it has been poured on us at our baptism. That Spirit invites us to a fullness of life in this world, whilst at the same time assuring us that we are not of it, and that one day we will come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Thanks be to God. Amen. We stand now to proclaim our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. With hearts and minds lifted to Christ, who has ascended on high, let us pray. We pray for your church throughout the world, that all who profess in faith might do so with integrity and with meekness of heart that the true love of God for all mankind might be their only boast. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, direct all nations in the ways of peace. Break down barriers of race, creed or prejudice. Overcome human pride and greed, that we might live together as brothers and sisters free of the fears and brutality of war and conflict. Praying especially for all who are suffering from the effects of war at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, embrace this community of St. Brides. Guide us in all our doings, that all who are called to this place for worship, or prayer, or interest, might see something of your glory revealed through us and in all we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, show your mercy on all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Support them through their healing, 
and comfort them in pain. Give strength to all whose vocation it is to care and nurse for our sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the souls of all who now follow the ascended Christ to rest in the promise of your eternal glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. Jesus said, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice, because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given 
and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because after his most glorious resurrection, he appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, thither we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Grace is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom and with whom and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Let us pray. God, our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ and have fed us with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that, nourished with such spiritual blessings, we may set our hearts in the heavenly places through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, our ascended King, pour upon you the abundance of his gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia.